to FCPS All-Stars. Our guest for today is Beth Ann Miller, Assistant Principal at Governor Thomas Johnson Middle School. Glad to have you with me Thank today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. I understand that congratulations are in order. It's There's been a lot of change over the last do several tell, do months. Tell. Um, I was the instructional coordinator of intervention for special education mm -hmm. and I have since become the assistant principal at TJ Middle School. Kudos to so, you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So how does it feel being back in a school and in your new position? I love it. I love being back with the students. I love being back with the teachers. It really is kind of like going home. I really, it's okay. great. Well, speaking of home, tell us a little bit about your family. Well, I have a large family. Um, I have five children, five. and I do. I have two children in high school, two in middle school, and one in elementary. Wow. And I have a wonderful husband who helps me out with all of them because I couldn't do it on my <laughs> own. Tell me about your husband. He uh, does technology, mm -hmm. and he's very active in that field. Um, he does a lot of volunteer work in the community, and it's funny because he said he doesn't see himself as an educator, yet everything he volunteers with winds up being with children. So, so that's one of those scenarios where uh, you look at what he does and not what he says. That's exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now, I, I noticed you're wearing pearls today. I really like them. Oh, I wore mine today, too. I am. Thank you. Where did you happen to get yours from? I got mine from China this summer. Mm. I actually was um, had a wonderful opportunity to go to China. And actually, in traveling to China, I did go around the world. Really? I did. I traveled from Dulles all the way over to Beijing. Then when I flew back, I flew from Shanghai back to California. And you, then back to Dulles. You really did go all I around really the did. world. I went around the world. So what caused you to find your way to China? Well, I had a wonderful opportunity. A lady whose name is Elizabeth Chung. Oh, I know her. She found, has a friend who is in Wuzhang, which is right outside of Shanghai. Okay. And that friend was interested in having a couple of teachers, a couple of educators come over and talk to their teachers about new ways to teach literacy. Okay. And so she invited, uh, she works with St. John's Regional Catholic School and um, invited Rosanna Rensberger, who teaches there, to go with her, and Rosanna invited me to go. So it was, it was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. That sounds like it. Now, why did they want U.S. teachers to come over? They were really looking for some more um, different instruction, differentiated instruction. A lot of the teachers teach in a more traditional manner in China. Okay. And by using that stand and deliver kind of model where the teacher really stands, the students receive the information, and then the students say back the same information. Like so it's a, a, apple. It's a apple, B ball, and then I say A, you say A, back and forth. Okay. Um, that type of, of teaching is done, which really doesn't make it into a context for the students. So we went over and talked about how to contextualize it for your student, for the students. What was it like engaging with the Chinese teachers? Oh, it was wonderful. When they first started working with us, we asked them to talk with one another. And it was something that they had never done before. What? When they, I, their professional development is very different than our professional development. Okay, how is that? Uh, when they show up for professional development, ev the speakers sit at a table up front, mm -hmm. give the information, while all of the teachers are almost like a lecture hall. All the teachers are sitting out in the audience and they take notes. Um, it's not very engaging. Their education isn't very engaging. It's just, it's a lot of information um, that needs to be memorized. So they were looking to teach in the English classes in particular, mm -hmm. how in a different way. So we also utilize technology in a way that they had never seen before. Now, they are known to be extremely technologically advanced, mm -hmm. but it hasn't, I'm sorry, it hasn't transitioned to their classroom? Some of it, ha it hasn't transitioned to the classrooms. It's transitioned into society. So if the teachers had a question about a word that they didn't understand, they immediately went to a dictionary. 
on uh, their uh, phones uh, for the teacher. Oh, no, okay. no, 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 no. <laughs> a dictionary on their phone for the teachers. But into the classroom, it hasn't taken place yet. So we introduced the teachers to Kahoot, okay, which is an interactive question survey type program that the teachers can engage in on their phones. Um, and we use it in Frederick County system as well as other school systems in the area. So. Um, isn't their internet a little different than ours? Like, were you, were you able to yeah. access all the materials you needed while you were there? We actually had to access it in a very different way. Okay. Google is not allowed in China. They only yeah. allow certain um, internet providers, you know, internet um, systems, computer systems. Okay. Um, so what we had to do was everything that we had planned, we planned in Google because that's how we plan. And that's what we use. And that's what we use. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that they use. So we did need to go to the old flash drive and take all the information and save it and bring it with us and run it through a flash drive. So, um, but the government actually does some filtering of deciding what websites are and are not allowed. And about how many teachers did you work with? We worked with about 45 to 50 teachers, depending on the day. Um, we had three schools that were actively involved in the Summer Institute. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really neat experience to work with not only the, the teachers, but also we worked with the superintendent of the school system, which we, they call the principal. Okay. They call it the principal just in terms of their structure. And then there also is a government supporter who works with them. Well, I have to say, I've been around quite a few teachers, mm -hmm. and I can't imagine being around 45 teachers and not having them want to talk to each other. So if that was the way it was in the beginning, how did mm -hmm. things end? So once we got them engaged and they recognized speaking to their shoulder partners was okay, or having a little conversation, or asking questions was okay, um, it definitely changed the, the feel of the classroom. By Friday and Saturday, we actually went into a Saturday session as well. Friday and Saturday, we actually had to ask them to be quiet a couple of times. <laughs> so, so it definitely made a difference with them. And what kind of aha moments do you think they had? Um, I think that integrating technology was a huge aha moment. I think that um, letting go of some of that traditional structure mm -hmm. that they're used to um, is, a, is a large one. So that they, they get the students and allow them to interact, allow them to experience the world. Um, one of the things that we also focused on was problem solving. So if the children experienced a uh, not being able to understand the context or a textual feature in the, the book, um, we talked to them about how to teach the children how to problem solve. Okay. Because right now, immediately the teacher just says, that word is apple. Can you say apple? Okay, it's apple. Okay. And then read on. Whereas um, we talked about different strategies that the, the children can use. While so. you were in China, did mm -hmm. anyone, one of their officials or anyone want to kind of find out really why you were there or kind of pick your brain or give you an interview or anything? We did. We actually had the opportunity to be interviewed by CCTV, which is basically the network that, that goes across China. Okay. Um, we do have CCTV here as well in okay. the United States, um, a different group, but it was, it was very different, very different. In the interview, instead of you and I speaking, you and I would be speaking, but I did, wouldn't understand what you were saying, and I had a translator with me. So you really appreciate this interview. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you and I can speak the same language. We that can. does make it a little bit easier. Most L days, I'm easier. good. Most days, right. I'm good. Did you make any special connections with any teachers or any staff over there? Oh, we did. There's a, there's a group of um, probably about six teachers that I really got to know very well. Okay. Um, and the leader of the program that did the organizing, like Elizabeth did on the United States end, they had a lady, Amy, on the other side of the world who um, did the organizing. And all of them have remained very close. We're hoping to have them come visit okay. in January or February timeframe. Um, so that they can come and see what America is about. That's wonderful. It sounds like you really shared a lot and you helped them learn a lot about American education. 
Now my question for you is, what did you learn while you were with them? I learned so much. I learned the value of our American education, the value of what we do with children every day, allowing the students to be engaged. Um, I learned that um, some of the stereotypes that, that people have about the, the country or the cities in, in China are not accurate. Did um, you have a stereotype? I, I actually, uh, embarrassingly, I did. When I went over, I was expecting a lot of bicycles and face masks on their face and a lot of smog and so many people because it, they are very populous cities um, that there were going to be so many people it was going to be difficult to move around in and it wasn't that at all. Um, wow. Their technology is, is pretty up to date. They had a lot of American cars there um, in the cities. They, they did have some bicycles, but not as many um, you know, as I learned about in the 80s. So it was a, a very eye-opening experience for me. Absolutely, and it's so easy to make assumptions based on what we see or what we're even allowed to sure. see about different places or even people. So I'm so glad that you were able to have that experience and realize that you had some stereotypes I, and that it's okay. And it changed. And, and I, 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 the whole country changed too between the time of the 1980s yeah. to now. So, so it really, I did. I learned a lot. It makes you appreciate what you have when you walk in someone else's shoes too. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's, um, it does. It really does. Did you get to take any time to do any sightseeing or exploring on your own? I did. I got to go to the Great Wall of China. Okay. I had the opportunity to climb that, which is very steep. You got your steps in that day. Oh, I definitely got my <laughs> steps in that day. My Fitbit was working. Um, and I got the opportunity to go to the Forbidden City. Okay. And I also traveled to a lot of gardens. In China, there are a lot of beautiful gardens lots of rock sculptures and, and water gardens, lots of koi ponds and things like that. So it was beautiful. Wonderful. It was very, very peaceful. And what very bit peaceful. of America did you experience there? I had the opportunity three weeks after it opened to go to Shanghai Disneyland. I did. It was wonderful. Um, I had, it was neat to see all of the characters um, the characters' names in Chinese as well as in English. Okay. It was funny to see they have a castle there just like they do at Disneyland and Disney World, Cinderella's Castle. At the castle, and they, they did their performance. During their performance, you saw Mickey Mouse, but he was up there speaking in Chinese. <laughs> so it, was, it definitely was odd because I didn't understand what Mickey was saying. But it was wonderful, and I'm a huge Disney fan, so um, it was great. That was an experience. Oh, like it was! It, it made the whole trip worth it too. You know, well, I have one last question for you. Okay. And this is always paramount for me. Mm -hmm. How was the food? Food was wonderful. It was delicious. I did try a couple of things that um, put me a little bit outside <laughs> of my my comfort zone. I tried fried eel. Does it taste like chicken? Uh, not quite like chicken. A little bit. Spongier than chicken, but mm. but it, it's something that I would try again. Okay. Um, I also had sea cucumber, a sea cucumber soup, which is nothing like a vegetable. Which is nothing like a vegetable. It's definitely a a sea creature. Isn't it like black and prickly? It's black and prickly and kind of like a, a scallop inside. Okay. Um, and I experienced that. Not to say that I would not necessarily try it again, <laughs> but. But it was the rest of the food was phenomenal. Well, it sounds like an all-around adventure. It was. It was once in a lifetime. Thank you so much for sharing your journey to China with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us as well. Stay tuned for our next upcoming episode. And in the meantime, shine on.